Hello everyone, welcome to another live hangout here at Voice Essentials. I hope you are having a, a safe and healthy uh, time wherever you are on the planet. Um, so many of you are still in your weekend. I hope you've had a great weekend. Uh, we, are, we are running a poll. Can you see the poll currently? I, I, this started with a, a little conversation I was just having with uh, Linda at the very beginning before we have jumped in live and uh, in the chat and uh, I, she was saying that she was glad that the cooler days are here and I was saying the same thing. We're here in Brisbane, Australia and where Linda is in Hobart, uh, which is way down at, off the mainland of Australia in Tasmania, for those of you who don't know quite the Australian geography. Um, uh, we are in autumn. We've just entered the autumn season. Of course, we're in the Southern Hemisphere. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, you are entering your spring. And uh, so I'm just running a little poll to see, you know, who, you know, what you um, prefer. And so far, <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll, 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 reveal, we'll reveal the poll a bit later. But so far, spring has it. I mean, it's so far, it's it's half of you prefer spring and we've had 10 votes keep voting um let us know what you think i i can't i tried to vote myself um i can't i can't vote i'll tell you what my favorite is um at the end not that at the moment that it's going to sway the <laughs> it's not going to move the poll at all anyway um i hope you are well uh, regardless of what the weather is doing in your part of the world. We, I, I did see there was some really tragic tornadoes in the US and um, just recently, and so I hope if you're in that part of the world that you, you are safe and okay. Um, we are going to do a mini topic today. We're going to be talking about learning lyrics. Oh, learning lyrics. It's, I've, got to, I've got to admit to you, this, it's, the, it's been the bane of my... Uh, professional existence as a singer. Uh, learning lyrics is is a real challenge for many of us, me included. But there are some things that I have done and learnt over the years uh, that that I have found helpful, not only for myself but for my students. We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Before we do, I do want to just mention to you that we have Melissa Cross joining us in about three weeks' time now. Take note of these dates. Next Monday, here in Australia, we're, we're currently in what's referred to as Holy Week, the Christian Holy Week. And so this is Easter. Easter weekend is coming up, which means Easter Monday, so next Monday, is a public holiday here in Australia. Therefore, we won't be getting together. Um, so we'll take a week off. Then we're going to come back uh, for a Q&A. And... I'm getting into a bit of a role with these mini topics. Let me know in the chat. Let Linda know um, in the chat whether you're enjoying the mini topics. Uh, we're, just, we're just touching on a topic, giving you some teaching around it, giving you some ideas, maybe generating some questions for what we then do after the mini topic with a Q&A. Um, so in two weeks' time, we're going to do Q&A with a mini topic. Then the week after that, which is the 24th of April here in Australia, we will be having Melissa Cross, Zen of Scream. She is world-leading expert in the area of distorted vocals, but she, she comes at it from such a healthy, balanced approach to vocal pedagogy. And I know that even if you're not into doing scream, death metal, those sorts of uh, voice uses, you're still going to get a lot out of that session. So mark that in your diaries. And again, the way to be, you know, always on top of what we're doing, when we're doing it, is to subscribe to the channel, hit the white bell icon, and that way YouTube will send you out a notification every time we go live. And we do, except for public holidays, go live every Monday at Australia, uh, 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. And uh, I'm just looking back over at the poll. Oh, Summer, summer is starting to kind of edge towards sp spring. Still got it. I, do you, is that any surprise? Uh, we'll we'll t we'll have a look at the poll after we do the mini topic because I think that will be that will be interesting to do, won't it? Um, just to find out if if one of the other seasons besides spring 
Can the other seasons catch up? Unlikely. Unlikely. Okay, let's uh, let's just jump in here. I just want to double check that we're all good. We are all good. And oh, can I can I tell you that now is the time to start putting in your questions. Of course, you might have a question that arises out of today's mini topic about learning lyrics. But we got to the end of last last week's mini topic, and we had I think one question. So you know, it makes for a short show. So make sure that if you've got your questions, make sure you throw them in the chat and, uh, and I'll be sure to answer your questions after we do the, the live hangout. Sorry, the, the mini topic. We're doing the live hangout right now. What am I talking about? Now let me just get myself set up here because we've got to get myself all ready to go. And uh, we'll, we'll get into the mini topic now. Let me... Oh, dear. See, there's so many things I've got to sort of get going to get myself around. <laughs> oh dear, I'm, I'm clicking buttons everywhere here. Okay, let's talk about how to learn lyrics. And as I said, learning lyrics has been, it's, it's always been a challenge for me. And, and, and I think for most singers, learn, how to you know, learn your lyrics and have them really bed down in your long-term memory. It's it's challenging for most, and um, and so I've got some some cool some some tips here. I think that some of them, you know, in fact, a lot of them are going to be pretty common sense. They're ones that you already know, but it's going to be worthwhile being reminded of the things that you can actively do. Be proactive. In your uh, in developing your lyrics, so let's let's first of all let's have a look at the first idea, and that is, and I've found this very helpful myself. This is how I go about it. Um, I go about learning my lyrics in in small bite-sized pieces. I'm not that person that can grab a whole song and and learn it start to finish in one bite. I, I can't do that. I find I, I have to learn the first verse. And then once I've got the first verse almost down, then I start singing the first verse into the second verse. Let's say it's a you know stock standard song that's verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. So I'll do verse, verse one. Then I'll work myself into verse two. Often, I've already kind of got the chorus because often that's where the hook lies and, and it's where it's the part of the song that I, I might already know. And so that's not too challenging. So I'll sing through that. You can see I'm just learning it bit by bit. And my learning strategy for nearly everything that we're going to talk about today is to learn by rote. Now, if you're one of those blessed individuals, and I really am quite envious of you where you're able to hear a song once or twice, three times and kind of know it. Wow, you are very fortunate and uh, you can really count um, yourself amongst the few because most singers that I meet have to put in the time and the effort to learn it. And here's a, a quote I found in preparation for today. Success is the sum of of small efforts repeated day in and day out. And it's that repetition of the small efforts. It's that constantly just going over the lyrics one by one. Recently, I was, I was um, sincerely and genuinely offered the opportunity to, um, to front a, a, a corporate band again. And, and I was... For, for a fleeting moment, I was very tempted because it would be super fun to be performing in a corporate professional um, setting again. But you know what? The, the thing that really um, held me back from doing it is that I currently don't have the time that it would take to learn the 50-odd songs, not the melodies. I've always actually found the learning of melodies relatively straightforward. The part that I've 
often found challenging is actually the learning, <laughs> the learning of the lyrics. And it takes me time. I have to put in the time to do that. And, uh, and so I, I, left, I let that opportunity pass me by. Um, and also, you know, I'd have less time to hang out with you guys on a Monday. And so at this point in time, we won't be doing that. Here's the other thing. Now, actually, when I, just before I came live with you, I thought, oh, I should have flipped the first and the second. Because actually where I start with my learning of lyrics is firstly through passive listening. So if I've got, say I've got five or six songs that I'm wanting to learn, um, I will create a song list and this, uh, sorry, a playlist. And this is so much easier to do now that we have technology like smartphones and Spotify and these sorts of things. I will create a playlist and I will simply have it playing in the background, you know, for when I'm perhaps doing mowing my lawns or maybe I'm, I'm cleaning my car or my studio or, you know, or cooking dinner. These are, I've just got it on in the background. And before I know it, I'm, I'm humming along, I'm singing, I'm listening. And then as I'm passively listening and as my, the time gets closer to me actively needing to start purposefully learning the lyrics, I start to actively listen. That is, I start to sing along. Now, I'm going to regularly get lyrics wrong at that point. The, the aim is not for me to be able to perfectly sing along with the lyrics in, in that moment, but I'm starting to ingest. I'm starting to move from that it's just background music to, oh, now I'm singing with that music. And then I get to that point where I, as I said before, I start to really move through it in smaller sections. One thing that I have definitely found helpful, and many of my students have said the same, is that you, you, you write the lyrics down. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go about this. The most effective way that I have found is to write it longhand with a pen and paper and sit there because it's slow. That's the point. You are slowly writing that lyric out. You can type the lyric out. Um, I'm a fairly fast typist, so consequently, I, it's almost a bit too easy for me to sit there and type it. I find for me the longhand writing it with, you know, with a pen is helpful. Some, you might find it that you're able to just type it into your smart device. Maybe that's one way you can go about it. But what we're doing in this moment is we're actively um, recalling the lyric, maybe where we've got the copy of a lyric written down on a sheet of paper and where actively looking it's it's the 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 taking the visually taking and then transcribing that same lyric what you do have to be careful in that process is that you accurately transcribe that you replicate the lyric correctly and so that there's no <laughs> you're not getting the lyrics wrong and sort of learning the wrong thing um, and that that can be really really helpful to do uh, now, this is one that I personally don't use, but you might find it helpful. And I know I've had a few students over the years who have said they use nonomic devices. And I always want to say denomic of devices. <laughs> ne mnemonic devices. Now, you're thinking, what's a mnemonic device? A mnemonic device. An example would be 30 days has September April, June, and November, is that correct? Um, it's, it's that ability or, for example, in music, every good boy deserves fruit. E, every good, E, G, boy, B, D, F. It's, it's, you're taking that and you're making an acronym. Now, the way you can do that is, there's so many different ways that you can 
create an you can create an acronym from the from the first letter of each word in a specific line if that's helpful it really comes down to how does your brain work and our brains all sort of find these things you know helpful in different ways um, you might even you could you could think of um, a color you could associate a color in fact I've been doing color work with one of my um, professional students in Sydney recently where we've been really applying um, coloring to particular points in a song and we've been doing that from the point of view of mood atmosphere interpretation and that's been really helpful to her um, so you might find that um, helpful as well N mnemonic devices um, let me know in the chat if you've found that you're able to do that again it's it's not kind of the way my brain I've, <laughs> I must admit for my brain I suddenly go it's another thing for me to remember but you might find that that's helpful. The other, the other thing too is sing out loud. Now I'm generally doing that, like I said, I'm doing that way back when I start to actively listen. I'll start to sing the lyric out, out loud. And what I find is that I'm able to, firstly, I'm able to identify, well, where are the areas that I don't know? Because I, start, I stumble over the lyric. Um, and so by singing it out loud, I'm actually starting to um, actively apply my articulators to the lyric. It also starts to lay evident the areas that I'm going to need to work on, particular points of diction. Maybe it starts to expose areas um, where breath might be a challenge. Um, but again, back to the lyric, it is all about, um, uh, you know, uh, being able to sing it through and what you can do is record yourself singing it out loud you know listen back to yourself and, and and start to build that fluency around the text and then finally uh, we're going to practice it in front of a friend and this is intended to place you under a bit of pressure so that you get to see well how much is that sticking? How much have I actually learned? Because when you place yourself into a, a slight performance mode, and so this can be in front of a, a, a close friend, it can be in front of a family member, you might even like to consider like recording, you, like with your smartphone, recording yourself. That Even that for some people is enough to place them into that performance setting where they're aware that they're being watched and that can place enough um, pressure on you, in a, in, not in a negative way, in a positive way, to actually cause you to, you know, just see, well, where, where am I able to hold on to the lyric and where am I not? Um, and so you might like to um, uh, give that some thought. You, you don't, you really want to avoid getting into a performance setting, if possible, having never had the opportunity to kind of perf um, perf perform, I'm trying, I'm seeking for, I'm looking for a different word. You don't want to get into a, a performance scenario where you haven't had the opportunity to kind of performance light, you know, um, in front of someone so that you've had that opportunity to sing it through, for someone to hear it before you have to stand on stage. Because for those of you who do perform regularly, we know that, that that's, that's a significant step up and it may well be that the performance anxiety, the adrenaline that comes with that can play a little bit of mind games with your memory. And, and you know, I find that I, I need to have that first stanza, that first verse down and really locked away because... That's often where I'm going to, to lose, um, lose it in that very first point. And also, do you know what? Actually in the verse immediately after the first chorus. And I, I do think it's in part because sometimes that's, I haven't practiced that as much as first verse, second verse chorus because I spent so much time working on the first verse and second verse. And anyway, these... Are some ideas for you to be thinking about 
because the best way to refine an interpretation is by getting out and performing. And that's by Yo-Yo Ma, that quote. Um, and, uh, and it's not only the best way to refine your interpretation, it's also a really, performance is a process um, where we re are refined by fire a little bit. We really get to know what what is sticking. It's not only the lyrics that you get to find out, is that really in place? You also get to check your technique um, as well. What what gets sort of thrown out the window when you're under that performance process? So there you go. There's some um, there's some ideas. Maybe you've got some other ideas that you have uh, found helpful um, over the years in learning lyrics. Make sure you throw them into the into the chat, um, Linda. Can um, gather those for us, and we'll we'll have a look at those um, uh, as we progress into the rest of the show. But for now, we are going to get into some Q and A right after this. Okay. Oh, where where are we got? Let's have let's let's have a. Let's have a quick look at our poll. So our poll is oh, spring. Spring has got it. We've we've had 19 votes. I'm going to end the poll, and spring, as you can see, came in at 52 <laughs> percent. That is not surprising to me. I think a lot of people really do like spring. It's the end of winter, and I guess this probably comes down to where you live in the world. I can tell you. Here in Brisbane, our autumns, are, uh, our winters are relatively, well, they are, they're super mild in, you know, when we relate them to other parts of the world. We, some of you would be very envious of the way our winter is. So I, I kind of lean towards autumn, winter myself, but I do know that that's in part because of where I live. Uh, so I know I can appreciate that many of you uh, and I've just seen Linda's comment saying it ain't called spring fever for nothing. That's true, Linda. Okay, let's get into some Q&A. And I'm going to come back here and we're going to get into um, uh, what, what um, is being what we're calling a serious question by Anthony. If I can just get myself going here. A serious question. I like serious questions, Anthony. I've been smoking for the past three years and doing harsh and clean vocals for 10 and only only recently lost clarity in my top range without belting. Would a nebulizer help the healing process? Um, the the only thing that will and and I and I I I hear you asking the question seriously, Anthony, and, and I'm going to give you a serious answer. Um, but an answer I hope that you don't hear with any sense of judgment or, um, you know, unnecessary uh, pressure on you. The only way that you will experience true healing in the voice as a smoker is to stop smoking. Um, smoking is something that only has bad outcomes for you vocally and and it's not only because tobacco will kill you um, and and you as know as well as I do that the science is as a closed book on this it's there is no question that tobacco um, smoking is highly addictive and highly dangerous because it kills many but percentages are so high not worth the risk the impact on your voice is also there's only negatives and I know we we hear about singers who talk about the fact that they smoke and it adds husk and whatever um, that's that may well be true um, but you know singing singing husky and it might be something that you really like in your voice but singing husky is actually um, in that in that particular instance it's a bit like you're singing 
having lined your vocal folds in sandpaper and and that sandpaper is rubbing together and uh, and causing high levels of abrasion which is incredibly damaging to what are very dry vocal folds um, and it really does heighten that risk of um, uh, of laryngeal cancer and those those sorts of other issues and you know you, you can't sound good dead so it just comes back to um, my strongest encouragement to you acknowledging that it's a highly addictive practice my strongest encouragement to you is to try to beat that addiction stop smoking and look for other modes of vocal technique to give you what you might have thought was um, the sound that you were looking for Anthony I hope you hear that from the right um, the right intent um, as I give that information as far as will the nebulizer help you with your voice to to heal yes it will but but not if you're continuing to smoke the you you you, you the smoking is going to potentially um, have very is going to have very long lasting damage and no amount of nebulizing is going to fix that um, the nebulizer is there to help um, heal um, voices that are heavily fatigued damaged voices um, and uh, voices as I said that are fatigued um, and that are not having to um, work their way through other significant challenges such as smoking uh, Anthony I hope that question was uh, that answer was helpful to you Aiden is asking is there any way to practice singing while being quiet yes there are and in fact I've got I've got a, a video coming out in a couple of months anyway it's about singing while you're sick and and one of those one of the things I talk about in that video is about learning to sing quietly as in no no sound as in practicing um, we, we it's an opportunity to practice l lyrics we've been learning about lyrics you can do that quite passively um, by just listening singing the song mentally and going through that um, but there's also there's quite a few studies um, that have been shown um, around motor cortex development where the person is given um, the skill but they're not allowed to actually do and I think it's darts dart throwing has been particularly looked at where the person you know is is tested in their dart accuracy throwing to a dart board and they're sent away for a week or a number of weeks and they're not allowed to actually practice throwing the dart they have to mentally practice throwing the dart so they're mentally visualizing and and seeing themselves going through the action um, and they're given some instruction I believe through that and then they've had that same person come back after that mental um, practice and lo and behold their accuracy has improved in being able to hit that bullseye on the dartboard really interesting fascinating stuff I think our singing now I, from from memory the researchers uh, were at lengths to say you, this is not supposed to suggest that you shouldn't ever you know actually throw darts at a dartboard to practice your darts and we would never want to replace <laughs> the ac action of singing with just mentally going through your technique um, but for those times when you are sick that can be a really helpful um, process to do so um, Aiden I hope that answers your question uh, we are getting some here's some some really great um, comments um, from people on this thing there's a uh, oh there's a this is I just want to jump to this um, Sharon is um, giving us a great 
um, idea about uh, the songwriting. After writing the lyrics down on paper, I envision how they look on the paper in my head. Yeah, so you're starting to really impression that image, aren't you, Sharon? Then I try and recall the first letter of each line, nanomic, um, to cue me to the lyrics, just one of my many ways. Um, Sharon, I, I can tell you, I was just recently, and I believe it was Helen Mirren, I, and, and I'll, I'll stand corrected in the chat if this is not the case. I'm pretty sure it's Helen Mirren that's recently just um, uh, revealed that she's been really struggling in the last few years um, because her mind is no longer able to do what she's done through her entire career. And that is, and I think it might, I, I, there's, there's something mentally, uh, a mental degeneration going on for her. I, I'm, I don't want to say what it is in case I got it wrong. But anyway, um, she, prior to this point, has been able, has had a, essentially a photographic memory. So for learning lines for her movies and her stage um, work, she's just looked at, looked at the lines once, done, got them. Oh, I heard that and I went, oh, <laughs> My professional singing career would look quite different, I think. <laughs> if I had that gift, that would be wonderful. And I know she, she's expressed this. Been, she's found it really challenging because she's actually had to have an assistant basically sit with her and do what the rest of us mere mortals have been doing our entire careers, and that is learn, the, in her case, her lines, uh, off by rote. Oh, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be nice to have a, 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 a photographic memory? It would be so nice. Now, Sharon, you've got a question. Your question is, what are your feelings about having lyrics on stage with you, whether on a music stand or an iPad? Sharon, you know, once upon a time, and this is by virtue of the fact that I, can't, I was right, raised up through the classical world. My first two years at my, in my undergrad studies of voice were classical. And under no circumstances were you permitted lyrics on stage. It was an absolute faux pas, taboo, do not do it. In, in, if you're in a competition, whatever, it's, it's basically you, you're doing yourself in by having lyrics. You must learn your lyrics. Then one year I was in, um, in fact, I remember the year, it was 2006, seven. I was in Melbourne, which is one of the capital cities of, our, of Victoria, lower down in Australia. I was recording my album. And um, I decided to, uh, with a friend, we went out for dinner. Um, and the, 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 we had been invited to here to go out to this particular restaurant. Melbourne has some of the best restaurants and they were having a live live band and it was being fronted by one of John Farnham's backing singers. Um, and she, it was her band and she was performing. Now she's amazing. I can't remember her name. And she, um, what shocked me, and I remember being shocked and, and I, and, and at the time, being a little bit, what's she doing, you know? Because she had lyrics on stage with her. I was so shocked to see someone of her caliber and reputation and experience with this, what was a massive lyric book. This was not a small iPad, you know, very minimalistic, you know, off to the side. This was a gigantic lyric book, smack bang, center stage, and she was using it. This was not a, a case of it was there just in case. No, she was, you know, at times she was like singing from the page. And I just remember being shocked um, at, at this. And, and shocked because of my upbringing, you know, academically, vocally, 
And, you know, over the years, you know, my, my aim over the years has always been to learn lyric off by heart. And it still, it still is to, to an extent, um, unless I'm playing guitar. If I'm playing guitar and singing, I'll always have my lyrics and the chord chart in front because to, to do all of the above is, a, is a, probably a step too far for the amount of time I have to learn the rep. But for just singing, I would typically try and do it without the lyrics unless <laughs> I'm suddenly thinking of all the times that I've had lyrics on stage. Uh, there have been times when I'm singing at a wedding when I also know that I'm not the, the focus. So I might be singing at the ceremony and so it might be the bridal entrance. So everyone's looking at the bride and you know what? I don't want to stuff. You only get one hit at that. Like there's only one opportunity to get to get it absolutely perfect as the bride walks down. I can't You can't stop and go, oh, I'm sorry, I just got the lyrics wrong. Would you mind stepping out and just, can we run that again just for the video? You can't do that, of course. So I have had lyrics in front of me for that. I cannot tell you when I have used lyrics on stage how much pressure that takes off me. Um, because as I said to you earlier, learning the lyrics um, is my is the hardest. In fact, it's my only hardest part of, of, of getting up and performing. It's very rare, uh, not, not, not it, this is not a, it never happens, but it's rare that the notes are, that I find that I find the notes challenging. It's more often, Am I going to remember those lyrics? And so to come back to the essence of your question, Sharon, is it okay to have lyrics? You're going to have to determine what is required of you in that moment. More often than not now, when I see bands working, um, even in the corporate setting, in the gigging scene, it's not uncommon to see band members with lyrics at the ready um, and um, I don't look I the only thing here's the only thing that you've got to be really careful of if the lyrics are there you will use them that is to say you've got to be really careful that you don't just spend your entire performance looking at the lyric sheet You've got to, if you are going to have the lyrics there, whether it be an iPad, whether it be a book, you've got to have the ability to, to really know most of the lyrics and be able to look away and perform. Because if you are wholly, solely focused on that lyric sheet, well, let's be honest, it, it's likely it's because you're un, unprepared, underprepared, um, and we want to be, you know, we don't want to fall uh, into that. So just be mindful of that, Sharon. I hope that is a, a helpful answer. Um, uh, Mr. Fomiati is, is actually throwing in a comment here. Let me find, see if I can find it, Mr. Fomiati. Um, oh, looking, looking, looking. No, hang on a second, hang on a second. Mr. Fomiati, this is a comment in re relationship to learning lyrics. It's an idea, um, uh, and that is to learn the context. And I think that's really, that's a really um, structural element to learning lyrics that you can, if you can really maintain what is what is the context, and, and that's great. Um, uh, Mr. Fomiati, the to to know the context of the story is at least going to keep you on the 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 straight and narrow of you know if you find yourself having to make up some lyrics on the spot, you're going to kind of know the types of lyrics that you're going to be looking for there. Uh, let's come back to um, uh, Shay. Is it? Uh, ooh, um, 
we go. This is an interesting one. Shane, I'm just looking for your question so we can put it on screen for us. Oh, here we go. Shane MC, Shane Muk. Do we naturally sing the note A at 432 hertz? Um, if we do, I'm unaware of it, uh, an A4 is um, 440 hertz. That's what the um, Western tempered tuning is for A4. Four, four, uh, uh, A4 is an A440. A3 is 220 hertz. Do we naturally sing the note A at 432? Um, I've, look, I, I think you're leaning towards there's some, there has been, and you know, I remember someone taking me to task many years ago on, on the channel in the comments section around the, the tempered tuning and how it's all skewed up and whatever. I don't really get caught up in that discussion, you know. Um, I'm happy to work within the 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 context, the parameters that have that have been settled over the last few centuries <laughs> around music, um, and uh, and so I I can't give you a definitive uh, answer to whether our voices naturally want to sing A at 432 hertz. I do know that. One of the challenges of learning to sing in tune as a singer is that the Western tempered um, tuning system, the, you know, every semitone is not exactly the same space apart um, mathematically. And so that is part of the challenge of, of, of keeping our, our pitch in check. Uh, let's see, we've got... Um, Oh, um, oh, there's a there's a, a, a thing here um, from uh, just a note from Linda saying Adam Neely has done a video on this very question. Maybe you ch should check it out. Adam Neely has a great channel. We've had his mum. We should have we should invite Kate on again. Um, we've had uh, his mum on the channel. She's a singing voice specialist, but Adam has a massive music based channel, and uh, and I didn't know that he talked to that very subject. Shane, so you might want to go and check that out. And, uh, and I think that's what we're, where we're going to pull it up today. We're going to finish with our, our questions. And uh, let me jump back over here. So there we go. We've, been, we've talked about learning lyrics there. We've covered some good ground today. I hope you've enjoyed um, our live hangout. Again, let me know. Are you enjoying the mini topics? I know, you know, I, I'm a great believer and... You know, I do. I do come under a bit of fire online um, in the ch on the channel that, you know, you talk you talk about a lot about singing, but you don't do a lot of singing. Actually, we've got I've got a lot of videos on the channel, pre-recorded videos, and I've got one coming out this Wednesday uh, about resonance, where it is very practical. Check it out. It'll come out this Wednesday about resonance. And about removing nasality and these sorts of things, very practical. Lots of singing, but here in on even when we get together for the live, we do talk a lot about our singing. I am a great believer. When you know more, you can sing more. If you were go to go to university to to do a bachelor of music, let's say an undergraduate degree in music. You are going to spend a lot of time doing music, absolutely, but you will spend a lot of time talking about music, mentally processing music, because the more you know, the more you can sing. And, and I, that's part of the design of my channel. It's not all about the singing, the doing, it's also about us talking through the, 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 the ideas surrounding singing. Today we talked about learning lyrics. Um, and we're going we're gonna to continue to talk to these topics. And this is why I get the special guests on, is so that we can, you know, we can talk. And, and, and many times 
we're talking at a university level, hopefully in a very accessible way, but in a manner that gives you access to really high end learning. And, and it's all for nothing. It's not costing you anything. The, the guests that we have on the show are so generous and, and they don't hold back. They're not, you know, keeping the secrets back. You know, no, they're, they're giving those that their knowledge, their experience, their expertise, they're giving of that freely and we all gain from that. So uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, hit the white bell icon, be reminded that we go live every Monday, 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, unless there's a public holiday. And in which case next week there is a public holiday. So we won't be hanging out next week. But I will see you again in two weeks when I hope you'll be here today. I had a lot of fun today. I think we covered some good ground, Linda. Um, that was good. And I very much do look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well. <laughs>